Okay, great. It looks like we're all set. All right, let's begin. Uh, good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining. Um, my name is Dr. Richard Sharma. Uh, welcome to our health talk. Uh, tonight, we're going to be talking about knee pain. So we hold these condition-specific talks on the third Wednesday of every month at the same time at 7 p.m. Uh, this talk is being uh, live recorded on Zoom and uh, also YouTube. Uh, and for that reason, those of you on Zoom, your video and audio has been muted, uh, but the chat rooms are still going to be open for you to ask any questions. And, um, you know, for those of you, those of you watching it on any other platform, um, if you have any questions, I'll go ahead and just leave it in the, the chat below and we'll do our best to get to them. Uh, this talk is roughly going to be around 30 minutes. Um, there's going to be a question and answer time afterwards. Uh, we have a lot of great useful information though uh, for you tonight. Uh, knee pain is a little bit difficult one to tackle because there's so many different ways to uh, injure your knee, <laughs> as we'll talk about. Okay, let's begin. Timer here. Good. So for tonight's agenda, uh, we're going to cover these four main topics how knee pain is caused, uh, how can we prevent it, uh, what are some exercises that uh, we can do to help with the, uh, with our knee pain, and then can chiropractic uh, help with knee pain. Now, before we jump right into it, let's talk a little bit about this really basic knee anatomy. I know a lot is going on over here, but I'm just gonna point out some really key things. So first thing that we're going to point out is over here, it says femur. Femur, this area right here is just your thigh bone, okay? The patella, this is your kneecap. And then this tibia, this is your shin. And then right, right beside your shin is something called the fibula, just a bone on the side. Now, these four bones collectively will make up your knee. And this is how it's supposed to articulate. As your muscle over here, this is your quad, right? It's the muscle that sits right on top of your, your leg right here. Um, as that contracts, it will bring this portion of the bone up. Okay, now point these things out because we're gonna be talking about misalignments in your bone, how those can uh, cause you to have knee pain. Um, next point that I wanted to bring up was this white surface right here. This is called your uh, condyle surface, okay? And over here, this is your meniscus. Now, I'm bringing this up is because this is this gap in between here. And this is another cause of knee pain that we're going to talk about, but happens to deal with a lot of degeneration that can occur in this area that can cause a lot of issues. Uh, and then the last thing I want to bring up is the ligaments. So ligaments hold bone to bone. See that right here? You have these two ligaments right here, your ACL and your PCL. And then you have these two ligaments on the side that will connect over here to hold this in place. And this is your MCL and your LCL over here, okay? Uh, some of you, those of you who like sports, you can probably relate to um, some of those, uh, some of those, um, those ligaments because generally people hurt them a lot. Great, I hope the audio is fine on this. Uh, I got this question the other day while I was doing this talk, and um, they asked, why do we have kneecaps? Okay, and I found this online. This is a great depiction of why we have kneecaps. So your kneecap provides a higher leverage point to allow less force for your quads to move your shin. And, uh, you know, people ask, like, can you live without your, your kneecaps? And uh, yes, you can still walk without your kneecaps, you can still live without your kneecaps, perfectly fine. It just means that your quads, uh, these muscles that sit on top of your, your leg, your femur, um, they have to work a little bit harder to move your shin. Okay, and uh, commonly, when people fall, if they fall really hard, they can actually fracture their kneecap. And commonly, instead of having that heal, um, most of the time, they'll just remove it. Let's talk about some fun facts, okay? <laughs> I really like these. So fun facts about your knee. Babies are actually born without kneecaps. It's just really some cartilage that's there. And the cartilage will harden over time uh, and forms and is formed by stress. So the more stress you put in that area, the uh, quicker that will end up forming. 
Now, uh, that's just one of many reasons why it's important for your, uh, to allow your baby to crawl because that will stress out those areas and those areas of the form. Uh, you can walk with the, without your kneecaps. I had mentioned that. Um, it's one of the most stressed joints in your body. The knee joint is a compensatory joint, meaning it sits between your hips and your ankles. When there's misalignments in your hips or ankles, your knees take the most of that damage. Uh, having type 2 diabetes is a risk factor for knee pain. People who have type 2 diabetes have an increased risk of developing osteoarthritis. That's just a bone disease that, uh, uh, you know, over time, the minerals in your bones, um, it becomes a little bit brittle, porous, and uh, um, can cause some degeneration in that area. Uh, knees rely on 10 muscles to function, and wearing the wrong shoes can cause you to damage them. All right, let's talk about the causes of knee pain. So multiple different causes, right? But we're going to break it down into three. There is you can have direct injury. Um, you can have a type of arthritis uh, that can cause you to have knee pain. And then, of course, mechanical problems. Uh, these are misalignments in either the hips, the knees themselves, or the feet that are causing you to favor one side more than the other. And that can cause you to wear that other side Okay, let's talk about these knee injuries, okay? So some of the injuries, we talked about the ACL and the PCL. These are those ligaments holding those bones together. Um, the very, very common sports injury that occurs um, when there is direct impact to the knee, or if you uh, say you're running, just like this uh, gentleman sitting right here, and you stop really quick, your shin can continue to move forward while the rest of your body stops and it can cause you to have that tear of that ligament, okay? Um, you can have fractures, um, more direct trauma, torn meniscus. This happens a lot in sports where there's duking. You're having to run real fast, stop, change directions, um, and it will cause you to tear your meniscus. That's where one side pops up and this area uh, becomes torn. Um, there's neighborsitis, patellar tendonitis, uh, let's move on. Another cause is arthritis we talked about. Okay, so there are different types of arthritis. Osteoarthritis is one of the most common types. Um, uh, gout is also another very common one, uh, more prevalent in males. And, you know, essentially this is when uh, the joint in between the thigh and the shin, right, the thigh and the shin begin to degenerate or even crystallize in this area. And, uh, you know, many of these conditions can uh, surprisingly be managed by simply exercising and having some dietary lifestyle changes. And each one of these has a different appearance um, of what it looks like on x-ray. But uh, this right here is just showing what osteoarthritis, a very common um, uh, bone disease. Degeneration, that space is now dwindled away and it's a lot of bone on bone which is very painful okay and then there is mechanical problems it band syndrome dislocation of the kneecap um you know hip and foot pain and femur tibia fibula articulation and okay? let me break this down a little bit so uh everyone's femur right isn't just pointing straight down points down in an angle, okay? And also your shin comes up at a different angle. We want this to be under 15 degrees, and that's considered normal. And we call this the Q angle. Now, if it's over 15 degrees, we would say that your knees are kind of bent inwards. That's gonna put a lot of pressure on the inside part of your knee. Or your knees could be a little bit bowed. That's gonna put a lot of pressure on the outside part of your knee. Both of these can cause a great deal of pain, okay? Um, and we're gonna talk about uh, a test that we can do to see, um, it's called the patellar apprehension test later on, um, to see if you have some patellar issues. Moving right along. Good, let's talk about some risk factors, people 
um, you know, who may be more prone to having knee problems than others. One is excessive weight. Excessive, excessive weight goes hand in hand with um, essentially putting increased pressure on your knees and, um, you know, could potentially cause your knee to degenerate uh, even faster if your if your body's not uh, built for it. A, uh, lack of muscle muscle flexibility uh, or or strength. Or adding in here, great. Um, so lack of muscle flexibility or strength is definitely a risk factor. Certain sports or occupations definitely can cause you to have uh, more wear and tear on your knees. Uh, one occupation that definitely has a lot of knee pain is uh, truck drivers. Um, drivers, they generally have to drive stick. And surprisingly, uh, hitting the clutch and driving consistently, these are repetitive movements, uh, even though they're very minor over long periods of time, can cause you to have knee problems. Uh, as you can see, sports injuries are one of the most common ones. Uh, doesn't matter if you're playing football, soccer, baseball, basketball, or just simply running. Um, all of these are you're increasing your risk of of some sort of knee pain. If you've had some sort of previous injury, uh, say if you've had chronic knee pain from arthritis, high impact exercises probably wouldn't be good for you to do um, if you have those injuries. Okay, and then we had talked about earlier type two diabetes. Uh, leads to osteoarthritis, which is um, an arthritis that can cause you to have some sort of knee. Good. Uh, this is something that was brought up. Um, someone asked me, is it good to do a regular quad stretch? Um, yes and no. So. How many of you before a run have grabbed your foot and, uh, you know, bringing the heel to, you know, your glute uh, before a run? You know, uh, we all do it, but it's one of those things that we see tends to increase knee pain, okay? By bending the knee all the way, uh, the kneecap actually can get jammed into the bones below, uh, below it and can cause some sort of knee pain to begin um, and become worse. Um, Essentially, uh, essentially, what you're doing is, um, as that kneecap uh, bends, it will crush some of the soft tissue below it, um, and it can form uh, what is called chondromalacia patella, and that's where the cartilage under the bone becomes. We don't want that. So, um, on the left, when this girl is raising her foot all the way up, um, and it's hitting her buttocks, we want to prevent that. This is a much better way of um, of doing a uh, good. Let's talk a little bit about prevention. What we can do to prevent having knee pain in the first place. First thing, and this is one of the most obvious ones, is to maintain your weight. Uh, second thing, wear sensible shoes with a good fit. I mean, through tight shoes or maybe shoes that don't have a good supporting arch can uh, essentially be bad for you if you're running. Um, also, your own biomechanics, everyone is built differently. Uh, and because of that, everyone may require a different sort of shoe. Um, you just have to really uh, get the check. Uh, warm up before you go running. Uh, a lot of that has to do with the muscles. Uh, do low impact exercises. Uh, swimming or walking is great for, uh, you know, knee prevention, um, knee pain prevention. Uh, weight training is also pretty good. And then don't suddenly change the intensity of your exercise. So, um, you know, and it's funny because that revolves mainly around sport. A lot of the times you're, you know, in football, you're going from not moving at all. And then they say hike and then you're going at full speed as fast as you can. Uh, you know, this is why, you know, I'll go over some sports statistics later, but um, this is why there's so many sports injuries that I feel with the knee. Uh, we're gonna talk about some ortho tests. Um, these are orthopedic tests that are really simple that you can do 
right from your very own home. And it's so simple to do, but it will um, allow you to know if you should get your knee checked, okay? And you can do this right now with me. And the first one that we're gonna go over is the patellar apprehension test. Then we're gonna go over the anterior drawer test and the uh, varus valgus test. Uh, it's easier when someone else does it to you, right? But um, you can do this on your own as well. Okay, patellar apprehension test. When doing this, uh, you wanna be relaxed and you want your legs to be preferably on a table. You don't want your hamstring or your quads to be uh, in any way contracted. Uh, you're going to supply a slight, a little, uh, slight, a bit of pressure on the inner part of the kneecap, and if it elicits some sort of pain, then you should definitely get it checked. Okay, it could be a problem with the uh, tendon that is attached from uh, your quadriceps that attaches right onto the patella, um, or there could be just some some issues below the patella as well. Good, really straightforward. Another good one is the anterior drawer test. So as you can see, this patient, uh, this uh, person is doing this, is just sitting on the patient's uh, leg over there, but and grabbing onto the knee and just applying a little bit of forward and backwards pressure um, and seeing if there is any large amounts of movement. Essentially that knee should be pretty locked in place and that anterior, the ligament should be holding that bone uh, your shin in place. And if it's moving too much or if it's causing any sort of pain, um, you should probably get that checked as well. There could be some, some uh, ligamentous laxity. And then the last one is called a varus and valgus rest. Okay. And this has for your MCL and LCL. This is the ligaments on the sides of your bones, right, that hold it from the side, very commonly injured. Um, and all you essentially want to do is uh, you move your knee a little bit in, and you apply a little bit pressure to the outside of your knee. And, it'll, and what it'll do is it'll uh, stretch out the medial aspect of the knee. So you can see how this ligament over here will be stretched as you apply a little bit of pressure going this way. Now, if that's causing you to have pain, there can mean that there's something wrong with your MCL, which lies right over here on this inside part. You can do the same thing with the outside part, where you bring your knee closer to the outside, keep your foot directly where it's at, and then you just apply some opposite pressure going from this direction to this direction, so medial to lateral pressure. Now, once again, if you feel any kind of pain going in this direction, there could be something wrong with the outside of your leg, okay? All reasons to go get your knee checked if that's, if that's going on, if there's any kind of pain there. Uh, let's talk about some exercises that you can do for your knee pain. So all of these uh, knee exercises are essentially designed to create more stability in your knee. Uh, we're gonna focus on just one quad exercise, one hamstring ex exercise, and then one that involves both, but it's a little bit more uh, dynamic. Okay, this is a really simple one to do. You just get uh, one, one of your bands and you attach it right to the foot of the chair. And this is called the seated single leg extension uh, with some sort of resistance, okay? And this is a quad recept uh, stretch and doing three sets of 10 reps, um, you know, once per day would be a great start to uh, really building up uh, the strength in your knee. So really essentially you need to strengthen all these muscles around the knee to provide more stability. The only thing I will say with this is as this person brings back their knee, we would like to still see a little bit of tension right here, not so much slack. But that's essentially gonna be a really good exercise to start with. All right. Next one is going to be a single leg glute bridge. Okay, this is a hamstring stretch. This is the muscle that's on the back of your leg. Okay, this is a really, really great stretch. It looks harder than it is, um, but essentially you just put one leg straight up and you use your other leg to lift your hips off the ground and you'll see that there is going to be some 
tension that get put that gets put on your hamstring and uh, doing 10 reps once again of this uh, three sets is really great for you once per day. Great. And then the last exercise I'll tell you about is the step up. Um, all you need is either a fly to stairs, right? Or if you have a box step, that's what that woman All you do is you place your foot on the step, you lift with your other leg, uh, holding it in the air just for a second. You don't want to fully extend that leg so that you're standing tall. You want to go halfway, hold that position for a second, and then you want to, you know, repeat that 10 times. And then you want to remember to switch sides, okay? This is going to work out not only your uh, quadriceps, it's going to work out your hamstrings and also your glutes as well. Remember, all of this is really designed to strengthen the muscles around your knee so that it provides more stability. Okay, moving right along. Now, let's talk about, you know, what chiropractic has to do with knee pain and, um, you know, what we can do to help with that. And I like to talk about sports teams and why sports teams have chiropractors. So number one thing is uh, sports team have chiropractors. Number one is for sports injury prevention. Okay. Next thing is, uh, you know, every team in the NFL and the Major League Baseball offer some sort of chiropractic services. Um, NBA, not all, but most of the NBA teams um, also have it. Um, there were 40 assigned U.S. Uh, chiropractors in the last Olympic Games uh, that were sent uh, just to, uh, you know, uh, for sports injury prevention. Um, 90% of all of the world-class athletes use uh, uh, chiropractic care to prevent injuries to improve performance. 30% increase in eye hand coordination after 12 weeks of chiropractic care and 72% uh, of the PGA golfers on tour receive chiropractic care and the list goes on um, you know there's much more to say about this but just the fact that I think it speaks volumes that um, you know all of the sports professions um, major league teams uh, all have chiropractic care built into it um, and essentially it's you know for First, prevention, but when stuff does go wrong, um, also for rehabilitation. So let's look at some research. What does the research say? So there's a lot of words on here. I'm just going to break it down. So this study was really great because uh, originally it focused on reducing the amount of muscle injuries, specifically hamstring injuries. Um, and they wanted to reduce the amount of hamstring injuries with chiropractic care and see uh, does it work or not. And essentially what they found was that um, there was a significant, um, significant reduction in um, not only uh, the primary lower limb muscle strains, like to so the muscle issues, but also um, the amount of weeks missed due to non-contact knee injuries. Uh, you know, through the addition of just having chiropractic intervention. So that's, I mean, that's huge, right? And that's mainly because, you know, chiropractic care helps increase range of motion, uh, promotes faster healing, uh, improves, you know, balance and coordination, um, and increases the overall energy levels. And, uh, you know, whether you're an athlete, you know, or just starting to exercise to improve your health, uh, you can greatly benefit from chiropractic care, especially, you know, for injury prevention. And that's it. It was a really quick uh, knee pain talk. We went through a lot of information. Uh, if you guys have any questions, you guys go ahead and ask them now. Give it a couple minutes. I know that went by fast.
Excellent. Looks like we're all good here. Uh, we do have one question. Um, how does uh, how does chiropractic adjust the knee joint? So um, essentially, the simple answer is we we put a we put a thrust into it. But there's a lot of analysis that goes into it first, right? We need to know what direction your knee is uh, misaligned in. And remember, your knee is made up of you know four different bones, right? You have your thigh bone, your shin, your fibula, which is that bone right on the side, and then your kneecap. And each one of those can go misaligned in the wrong direction. And depending on where you're having the knee pain, um, you know, points to certain, certain things. But really, we go in there, we feel, you know, uh, what area, what range of motion is restricted. Um, and then if need be, if there's something a little bit more serious, we'll end up taking x-rays of those areas. Um, but then we'll go ahead and make the proper adjust, uh, adjusted thrust uh, to set that bone back into a better alignment. Okay, so we have a couple questions. So, okay, um, I'm gonna start with, um, okay, so um, the question is, why does my knee hurt when I kneel? So there could be a lot of different reasons why your knee pain hurts when you kneel. Um, it really is gonna depend upon, um, you know, it, it really, we'll have to go into a history of it, right? Um, we need to know um, if you injured your knee, if there was any direct impact, what kind of um, in, you know, knee pain is it? Is it an injury? Is it a biomechanical issue? Or is it something due to arthritis? That's the first thing that we need to do um, as far as diagnosing it. Once we've diagnosed what's going on with the knee, then we can figure out, you know, why it, you know, why it hurts when you kneel. Yeah, any kind of pressure just putting on your knee can, if it's causing you some sort of pain, there's you know, some issues going on there. Yeah, so that's a, a little bit broad question um, to answer, but uh, it the answer is really, it depends on uh, you know, the main cause of it. Uh, let me get to this question here. So, right. I was wondering how my father might be able to work on cramps in his leg every night. Um, he's diabetic and he's also going through chemo, uh, which is add to it. But uh, are there simple exercises he might be uh, he might be able to? Do yeah. So um, I went into some exercises uh, during uh, this talk. Um, I see that you did come a little bit late, um, but I can just go back through them uh, just really quick. There are three exercises that I would recommend um, doing, um, and this is these three are just very simple. It is the seated single leg extension with resistance. This can really help reduce knee pain. The next one was single leg glute bridge. And then the last one I would also recommend is just doing a step up. And, when you, and also when you come into the office, we can have further conversation on that as well. Yeah, I can uh, definitely hook you up with some of that uh, information there. Great. Excellent questions. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and call it there. Uh, thank you guys all for attending. Like I said, we have these condition specific talks on the third Wednesday of every month. Um, next month, the, the topic is gonna be the Okay, uh, thank you guys for joining. I'm gonna go ahead and end the call. Great.